I'm going to stop by by drawing my um my quadrants. Which quadrant am I in? Second quadrant again. So I'm going to draw my triangle off here. Now, I threw a bit of a curveball at you, right? Because I said to you, frequently, you will get nice numbers, like this, frequently. But you don't always. So when it tells you cos x is minus 3 over 4, um, where is x, by the way, the angle x? Where would you describe it? I would probably say you could either describe it as the angle of the triangle at the origin, or just the bottom right hand angle. Okay, so I'm going to chuck x in there. So if that's where x is, where are the minus 3 and the 4? Or the 3 and the minus 4, depending on which one it is, I don't know yet. Where are they? Yeah. Okay, minus 3 is this guy, he's heading to the left, that's why he's negative, and 4 is... Okay, so 4 is the hypotenuse, which means, unfortunately, yes, you are going to get some surds here. Uh, this is 4 squared is 16, negative 3 squared is 9, so what is this guy over here? Root 7. Okay. Um, if you do get your wires crossed, a common incorrect answer there is root 5, um, or, or just 5, even though that wouldn't make a triangle. Um, do, do that extra line of work just for yourself over here. Just say, like, give that thing a name, call it h for height or whatever, and literally write this out. Just so you get that number right, because it's easy if you're doing it in your head and you've got non-standard, like a non-Pythagorean triad, um, to get that wrong. Okay, that was all the setup, really. Now I can work out what tan and cosec are. Uh, tan, let's go with that one. Which pair of um, sides are going to give me the ratio? Opposite on adjacent. Is that right? So, opposite on adjacent. You can see I've just done an extra step by putting that negative up where it belongs in a simplified fraction, so it's up the top, even though it actually comes from the denominator. Cosec, what's that? Yeah, because it's 1 over sine, instead of opposite on hypotenuse, it's hypotenuse on opposite, which sounds weird just coming out of my mouth, but whatever. Um, so you can see that because sine is going to be positive here, look, see, they're both positive, right? It's going to be, instead of this on this, it'll be this on this. What do you think? Yeah, happy with that? Um, you can, if you want, rationalize that. You can say 4 root 7 on 7, but that's not really the emphasis of this question, so I'd be happy if you just left it as 4 root 7, okay? Now, so far, I've given you three examples, and every single one has been of the same format, okay? They tell you some ratio, then they give you some kind of restriction on what the angle can be. They don't tell you what the angle is, but they tell you it's got to be between here and here, and then they say, find out some other ratios of the same angle, okay? But this question over here, I have deliberately left something out. What's missing? There's no restriction, right? I haven't told you theta is uh, over here or over here. Theta, in this question, could be anything. Now, just rewind a little bit. Come back to this question over here. If I took off that restriction, the theta is obtuse restriction, like so, the question changes, right? Because I've got my quadrants on there. If tan theta is that, I'm not necessarily in the second quadrant. Where else could I be? I could be over here, Right? Because all of the same, you remember I said, oh, this is 5 and minus 12. Well, there's another combination of these numbers that will give me the same 10 ratio. Namely, if you go over here, if theta's there, it's not 5 and minus 12, is it? It's actually 12 and minus 5. Do you agree? But of course, when you divide them, when you take a ratio, you get the same number. Yes? So in this case, all of the um, values will be the same. It's the same right angle triangle, after all. But you're going to get different sides, aren't you? Uh, instead of this and this, if I had got this second version of the question, what, what would it be? What would sine theta be? You're in the fourth quadrant. Have a look. Minus five. You can just say, well, in the fourth quadrant, only cos is positive, so therefore sine is negative. Or alternatively, you could be thoughtful about the sides of the triangle. You can say, wait, it's opposite, which is negative. Uh, on hypotenuse, which I have written in, which is positive, right? So you can say, well, that'll be minus 5 over 13. And you can use the same logic. You can say cos theta. In the first case, it's the fourth quadrant. So cos is supposed to be positive there. Or you could just look carefully at your signs and say, look, positive on positive. 
12 over 13. So, if they take away that restriction, like I have here, they will change the wording of the question ever so slightly. Because cosec theta might not be just one thing, it could be something else. You don't know which quadrant you're in. They will say, find possible values of cosec theta, because it could be one of two things. So let's quickly have a go at this. If tan theta equals two, if tan theta equals two, I draw my quadrants again. Unlike in the previous questions, I don't know which quadrant I'm in. There are two possibilities. Which ones? Third and first. Yeah, third and first. Because in this one, they're all positive, and in this one, tan is positive, and that's the one I'm dealing with. Okay. Now, tan theta equals two. Two is a rational number. I can write it as a ratio. I'd probably write it as two over one. Is that okay? So in my first quadrant here, opposite on adjacent, I had better be 2 over 1. So I'll make it about twice as long, just so my diagram looks reasonable. Okay. Does that look okay so far? You can see why I'm in the first quadrant. You can see why I position my 2 and my 1 where they are. Opposite on adjacent gives me what I need. Okay. Before we move on to the other version, let's just work at cosec theta here. Cosec theta is the reciprocal of which one again? It's the reciprocal of sine, so I'll just write that. One over sine. Now, I don't know what the third side is. I don't know what the hypotenuse is. Can you tell me what it is? Yeah. Root 3. Is it root 3? I think it's root 5. Let me just check that out. 1 squared plus 2 squared is 1 plus 4, which is 5. So I take the square root to get the hypotenuse. So that's so good. It is a bit tricky. You're doing things in your head, right? Um, 1 over sine, therefore, is going to be not opposite on hypotenuse, but hypotenuse on opposite, so I'm guessing that's root 5 on 2. Is that alright? Okay, now you can if you want, and just like I did over here, you can draw now the second version of um, tan theta equals 2 over 1. It's going to be down here. You're going to draw a triangle like this instead. Like that. Do you agree? Theta is going to be vertically opposite to my original theta. That's why it's the same size. Uh, my 2 and my 1, where are they going to go? Now, this is, this is where, again, if you're careful with your quadrants, you can see what's going on, right? Do you see how the x-coordinate is to the left? That means it's negative, right? But the y-coordinate is down. That means it is also negative. But of course, when you take the ratio, those two things cancel out. Does that make sense? But I like to put it on here so that I know actually why. Why is it also um, why is it also positive over here? Because these two exactly cancel. Um, this is still going to be root five. So when you think about one over sine theta in this triangle, what happens to the magnitude of one over sine? The magnitude, the value. Nothing changes because it's the same triangle. It's a congruent triangle. I've just moved it around, right? So therefore, uh, <coughs> version two. <laughs> Cosec theta, it's still hypotenuse on opposite. But look, 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 look. See, we wrote negative two because we saw it was going down. So that's why you can say it's negative root five one two. Alternatively, if you want to be really cheap, you can just say, well, if it's not the positive one, it's going to be the negative one. <laughs> you know? I prefer to draw the triangle because it shows I know what's going on, and that's why it's also the negative version. One last quick pointer before we leave this question, which you don't need to know to solve it, but it's important anyway. Um, tan is positive over here, and it's positive over here. This is, if you've got an acute a base angle, you've got theta over here, You've got 180 degrees minus theta over here. What do you have down here? It's 180 plus theta. Do you know why? Do you know why 10 is positive exactly here and here? Do you remember what the tan graph looks like? The tan graph, right? It's that weird one with all the asymptotes on it, right? The tan graph looks like this. If you Think about it from 0 to 360. You've got um, the midway there, an asymptote here, an asymptote here, and then unlike sine and cosine, which have a period of 360, right? Tan has a period of 180. You take that thing, that thing, that's the whole thing, and then you just make another copy of it. 
right? Every 180 degrees, every 180 degrees, you get a new solution, okay? Which is why it's over uh, there and then over there, and then it'll come back over here again if you add 180 degrees more and more times.